Welcome to Electrified, where we talk about Tesla, technology, and finance. And yes, I am indeed qualified to talk about the latter as I spent three years as a financial advisor with Edward Jones Investments. While there, I had the privilege of managing over $60 million of real money for real families. I was later offered a position to leave the industry, which I could not turn down. However, I went through the very best training in the industry and finance was actually my passion well before technology and even Tesla. In today's episode, we'll walk through a case study where we take a look at what it will look like for Tesla to achieve a 10% share of the global automotive markets. Now, I chose 10% because at the end of 2019, Toyota held a 10.24% share of the global auto market. Of course, we in the Tesla community expect Tesla to meet and eventually exceed this market share number over the next five to 15 years. At the end of this episode, we will take a look at what this may mean for Tesla's market cap when they reach that 10% market share. It will be back of the napkin math. However, this is still excellent to do as a thought experiment. While aggregating the data for global auto sales over the last two years, there was discrepancies among the information. So what I did is I brought all of the data together and then I took an average from three different sources to get a rough idea of the numbers we can rely on. Thus, in 2019, there were approximately 72.6 million cars sold. And in 2019, this dropped to approximately 69 million. As you can see from this chart, the top three markets in terms of geography were the United States, Europe, and the number one spot was held by China. So if you were wondering, now you know why Tesla chose those three locations for their first gigafactories. Now taking a look at Tesla sales for 2018 and 2019. In 2018, they sold 245,240 vehicles. And in 2019, that number jumped to 367,656. Doing the math, that breaks down to a 0.33% global market share in 2018 and a 0.53% global market share in 2019. Now, I'm sure some of you have heard that figure that Tesla owns one to 2% market share. That is actually for the US alone, and those figures are actually accurate. Breaking it down using the same numbers, in 2018, Tesla held a 1.43% of the US market, and in 2019, that number jumped to 2.18%. Now, for the sake of this experiment, we're going to hold these figures for the global sales flat, assuming a 70 million per year auto sale number. That would mean for Tesla to achieve a 10% global market share, they would need to sell 7 million cars per year. As you can see from this chart, their Fremont facility is set to have an annual capacity of 590,000 cars produced per year by the end of 2020. This is based on a 500,000 unit run rate for the Model 3 and the Model Y. As we recently saw with Giga Shanghai, Tesla can build a Gigafactory in roughly one year's time. After that, they can actually scale production to roughly 200,000 units per year in the first year of operation which they have said they plan to do by the middle of this year at Giga Shanghai. Given these numbers, it's safe to assume that Gigafactories will be pumping out to the order of 500,000 units per year. Of course, down the line, we expect Gigafactories to be able to produce closer to 1 million units per year. However, for the sake of this thought experiment, I thought it would be best to stick with 500,000 units per year. So using these numbers with Fremont, Giga Nevada, Giga Berlin, and Giga Shanghai, that gives us four factories responsible for producing vehicles. If each of those can produce 500,000 cars per year, that would be a 2 million car per year run rate. 2 million cars per year is actually only 29% of where they need to be to hit that 10% market share, which would be 7 million cars per year. So doing the math, 7 million cars divided by 500,000 cars per factory making cars would require 13 gigafactories plus Fremont to be capable of hitting that 10% global auto sales number, 
not just electric vehicles. This is all auto sales. As we saw in Giga Shanghai, this one year time frame from beginning construction to production is probably a good template to use moving forward. Of course, with each new Gigafactory, Tesla implements many new efficiencies. So it should in theory shorten the timeline. However, it's not that simple because these Gigafactories will continue to expand and have different operations and not all governments will be as supportive as Giga Shanghai was in China. Thus, we'll just say that these factors will balance each other out and we'll stick with a one year production for each factory. Currently, Tesla is under construction at Giga Berlin and Giga Austin. So if we assume that two new factories can be built each year, that would take us another five years to reach 10 new gigafactories. And if you remember from the math earlier, these 10 new factories in addition to Fremont, Giga Berlin, Giga Shanghai, and Giga Nevada would give us our 14 vehicle production facilities for Tesla to be able to achieve that 7 million car production run rate per year. So as you can start to see, there is a realistic chance that Tesla achieves this goal sometime in this decade. Ron Barron himself would seem to agree. He was predicting 1 million cars a year by 2022, and with a global car sales figure of 90 million, he sees Tesla doing 10 million per year of that figure which would equate to 9%. Taking a look at a technology adoption curve chart, you can see that Tesla is actually still in the innovator stage. While it feels like Tesla has already taken over the world to us in the community, zooming out, we need to remind ourselves they are literally still in their infancy in terms of market adoption. What's important to note here is the trend line of the bell curve. Once we shift into the early adoption phase, the rate ticks way up. For me, I've always said Tesla getting a car under $30,000 would be key to hitting this threshold. And I will stand by this thought as no matter how great Tesla cars are, no matter how safe they are, no matter how fun to drive they become, if they're not affordable for the typical working class citizen, it just won't matter and that market adoption won't happen. Typically, most working class people are buying cars well under $30,000, so that compact car or continuing to drive down costs of the Model 3 are going to be crucial for Tesla to ever achieve a 10% market share. Why do you guys think BMW and Mercedes have been stuck under this 3% market share figure? Those brands at that price point only appeal to a select portion of the population. And Tesla's average sale price still hovers around $50,000, which is well out of range for many, many people. Elon even said on the Q2 conference call that he's still very frustrated with the cost of Tesla vehicles and that means he knows that he does have to continue to drive down costs if he wants to truly transition the world to sustainable energy. Now, assuming they do hit this figure, 7 million cars per year times an average sale price, which will keep the same at $50,000, that would generate $350 billion in annual revenue. Now, this is not including anything from the energy division and nothing from software as a service, which in the next decade should continue to expand rapidly. So it is actually reasonable to assume that in the next 10 years, Tesla will indeed hit a market cap of $1 trillion. However, we need to slow this down a bit and put things into context. Currently, Tesla is trading at a price to sales ratio of 11, which is incredibly high. They only did $24.6 billion of revenue in 2019, but yet their market cap is hovering around $280 billion. That's where you get the 11 times price to sales ratio. If you wanted to extrapolate this price to sales ratio to that $350 billion in revenue that they could theoretically achieve this decade, that would give them a market cap of $3.8 trillion. Trillion with a T. Of course, I am not arguing that that's the case or that you should bank on this because I believe that price to sales ratio of 11 already has a lot of this future growth baked into today's stock price. However, with $350 billion in sales, even a price to sales of three to one 
without any other revenue would put them at a $1 trillion market cap. And guys, not to throw water on the flames, but it is really important that we take a look at the revenue growth rate of Tesla over the last three years. Tesla did $11.7 billion in 2017, 21.5 in 2018, and 24.6 billion in 2019. The year-over-year -year growth from 2016 to 17 was 68%, 82% from 2017 to 18, and then last year, this dipped all the way down to 14.5% of revenue growth year over year. No matter how big of a Tesla bull you are or I am, this number should not be overlooked. 14.5% revenue growth from 2018 to 19 is mildly concerning no matter what the extenuating circumstances were. Even Amazon, who is well ahead of Tesla on that adoption bell curve, is still growing revenues at around 20%, so we need to keep an eye on this metric in the quarters to come. And I'm actually very curious to hear what you guys think about the revenue growth rates over the last three years, but more specifically from 2018 to 2019. Is this drastic revenue growth slowdown concerning to you or are you not worried about it? If you have a second, please let me know what you think in the comments below. That'll wrap it up for today's episode. I appreciate you guys watching. Like the video if you did, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll catch up with you guys in the next one.